glad to see you guys came tonight and uh, glad to see you made it here safely because uh, I almost didn't. <laughs> yeah, made a mistake coming up here tonight, y'all. Rolled up here with my friend with the raggedy car. <laughs> you know, everybody's got that one friend with the raggedy car. And if you don't know who it is, it's you. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Like, I love my friend to death, but I hate riding in his car. Yeah. He's got one of those kind of cars where, like, every time he hits the brakes, it feels like his car is about to shake to pieces. <laughs> I'm in a car like that. Every time he hits the brakes, it would throw me into an instant seizure. <laughs> yeah, I should have seen us coming to the show tonight. He's driving. I'm sitting there trying to read the GPS. I'm like, yeah, the GPS says once we get to the interstate exit, we're going to make a right. Then we're going back up. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with this car, man? <laughs> I looked up. I was in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to gave me the shakes. <laughs> but made it safely, though. Made it safely, man. Single guy here in town, man. Any single people here tonight? Single people? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank all four of you for coming. Uh, nice single city here. That's good. <laughs> that just came out, man. See, that? Yeah, see, I'm, I'm a single guy, man. Um, and uh, my friends always told me, they said, Renard, if you want to meet somebody, you got to do some internet dating, all right? Yeah, you got to go to the internet, you got to get on Tinder or a Bumble or something like that. So I said, okay, fine. So I got on there. And the thing about these dating sites is everybody gets to write their own bio, all right? And so you got to read the bio to decide if this is somebody you might like, you know? So every woman, they always put the same thing, you know? They're walking in, they're like, hey, I'm looking for positive vibes only. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, who's looking for negative vibes? You know what I'm saying? Like, that'd be weird, looking for a toxic situation. <laughs> it was like, that's a given. We know you're looking for positive vibes. I read one girl's bio, she just started going off as soon as she started writing the bio, you know. She was like, first off, let me tell you something about myself. I got a good job, I got my own money, I really don't need a man, but I'll take one. I got six kids and one on the way, so if you can't deal with that, swipe left, you punk loser. I knew you couldn't handle responsibility anyway. Your mama's a nut job, your daddy's a heifer. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, are we in our first argument right now? Like, you jumping levels in this relationship. <laughs> Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure out. I told, um, I had one girl I dated. She told me that I kissed too passionately. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? You know, because I thought women like passion, you know? So the next time we got ready to kiss, I switched it up on her. Yeah. I walked up on her. I was like, mwah. <laughs> Now get out of my face. <laughs> she was like, oh, I'll take the passion back. I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Try to figure out what they like, man. Try to <laughs> you had to figure out what you like, you know? That's why my ladies in the crowd, ladies make some noise. I see lots of beautiful ladies here tonight. I love y'all to death. I love talking to y'all. And one thing about ladies, I have to make this public service announcement to my ladies. I love y'all to death. But uh, one thing I got to tell you guys, ladies, if you do not have to shave your eyebrows off, do not shave your eyebrows off, all right? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a nice, natural, beautiful eyebrow, all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you got to tell women this, guys, because, you know, they'll shave them off and Crayola color them back on with magic marker. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a nice, natural, beautiful eyebrow. <laughs> and the thing about it is, like, what y'all don't realize, it throws us off when you don't have them as men, you know? <laughs> yeah, because we're not used to seeing it, you know? Tell you what happened to me one time, I was on a date, the girl I was with, she gets up, she said, hey, Renard, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. I said, cool, go to the bathroom, do what you gotta do. I'll be out here when you get back. So she gets up, goes to the bathroom, uses the bathroom, takes her eyebrows off, and comes back and sits right down in front of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sat there for the next 35 minutes trying to figure out what was different. <laughs> mm, uh, I was like, ma'am, are you at the wrong table? Um, she was like, it's me. I took my eyebrows off. I'm like, yeah, it's not a hat. You don't just take it off and put it on. Like, you know, keep the eyebrows on until we get home, at least. You know. <laughs> figure it out, y'all. Gotta figure it out. 
And I, I know women have stuff to deal with too, you know, with men, I know, you know. I was dating one girl and uh, one day I came and uh, I told her, I said, hey, let's go out to eat, you know. And she, I said, what do you want to eat for dinner? And she said, you're asking me what I want? That is so considerate. I'm like, don't most guys ask the lady what she wants to eat for dinner? And I was like, who are you dating before me? You know, she comes home. She's like, hey, I'm thinking about pizza for dinner tonight, baby. What are you thinking? He's like, shut up. We're having popsicles. <laughs> All right, I'll take them out and put them in the sink, throw them out. I like a man that knows what he wants. <laughs> Got to learn stuff, man. Got to learn stuff, man. I had one girl I was talking to, and I thought things were going really good. We hadn't met yet, so I invited her out for breakfast. And I said, hey, why don't we go out and have breakfast? She said, I can't go. I'm like, I thought everything was going good. Why can't you go? She said, I can't go do breakfast because I'm intermittent fasting. <laughs> and I'm like, intermittent fasting? I was like, hey, baby, I don't care what kind of gloves or mittens you wear. I, you know, I don't even wear that. I, <laughs> you know, I was like, intermittent. I don't even know if they had intermittent. So I was like, I thought, interme I, I thought mittens were always outer. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like intermittent? You talking about pockets? You talking about <laughs> <laughs> She said, no, I don't eat until after 12. I was like, oh, okay, okay, I got you. Learn stuff, y'all. And that's why education is so important, y'all. You know, I figure if I would have stayed, paid more attention in class, maybe I would have known what that was, you know. That's why education is important. Do we have any educators here tonight? Any educators? Okay, a couple of them. Yeah, y'all make some noise for my teachers, y'all. Yeah. Not an easy job. Not an easy job. I hope y'all make good money here. Uh, teaching. Uh, I don't know if y'all do or not, but I got a chance to teach uh, for a couple years in Tennessee, and I was good and broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it was messed up, you know, because I worked hard that first semester. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, then I saw that paycheck. I was like, let me scale it back. Uh, <laughs> they don't value this. It was messed up, man. I worked hard that first semester, man. Then we went on Christmas break. I came back after Christmas break. I looked up. I was so broke. I ended up on free lunch. <laughs> I was in line with the kids. I was like, this is not cool. Hold on. I'm like, let me borrow 35 cents so I can get an ice cream sandwich, man. Come on, man. I just want some hot brownies. Or <laughs> Couldn't avoid it, y'all. Couldn't avoid it. And it was tough, man. I had to get out of education, man. And not because of the pay. I had to get out just for the simple fact that uh, it was starting to make me racist against my own people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I see y'all looking at me like, brother, who are your people? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw y'all when I came up here. Y'all like, that brother looks like all of them. I have no idea. I'm not going to guess his nationality. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> it's okay, though, y'all. It's okay. I'm just a light-skinned black guy, y'all. Yeah, I'm like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Negro. <laughs> Be on your toes. Be on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> and it made it tough looking like this working around young people. Because you know, young people today, if you got kids or you spend time around young people, you know, kids today will say anything. Yeah, doesn't matter. If it comes in their brain, they're going to say it. Yeah, doesn't matter. You know, I, one day I was teaching, I walked into another teacher's class to talk to the teacher. And then a student stands up in the middle of the class and yells out, hey, excuse me, man. Uh, anybody ever told you that you look like Abraham Lincoln and a rapper Drake had a baby? He's like, hey, hey, pass me that $5 bill, baby. Let me see. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, you look like Drake Abraham Lincoln, man. I don't know if he's like that. <laughs> like, let me get back to my class. <laughs> Don't say anything, man. And I tell you what's great. It's like, then, like, after that, like, like, before I did that, like, I got to work as a substitute teacher. You know? Yeah, and when you work as a sub, like, yeah, you already know. Yeah, so you, you said, oh, no. You know, like, because, uh, like, a regular teacher, you know, you can call mom and dad. You can get people in trouble. Substitute doesn't have anybody's phone number. They can't call home. They can't get a kid straight, you know? And I'm gonna tell you, like, when you're subbing, you don't know how your day's gonna go, you know? Some days you have a good day. Some days the kids come in, they sit down, they're quiet, somebody learns something. It's a miracle. 
<laughs> but other days, you just lose control of the class. You know, nothing you can really do. You know, sometimes the kids get to running around the classroom, they get to throwing paper balls, stabbing each other in the neck with pistols. <laughs> You, do. you don't know them, they really don't know you. <laughs> but I'm here to tell y'all tonight, it is nothing worse in the world to make you feel like less of a man than when that little old woman teacher from across the hall has to come get your class straight for you. Because <laughs> your class got so loud, the whole school is like, what is going on down there? <laughs> yeah, then they send that veteran teacher down there. They send Miss Jenkins on down there to your classroom. Yeah, they yell out, send Miss Jenkins down to room 103. <laughs> She comes in there, she'll kick your door in like Batman. <laughs> she runs down the hallway. Boom! What is going on in here? Uh, everybody sit down and shut up. Cut the lights off, everybody put your head on the desk. <laughs> now you all know you don't act like this when the real teacher's here. I'm like, you just gonna say that with me standing right here, man? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to be the real teacher. You know? <laughs> And this lady, she didn't care. She just kept talking. She's like, all right, now listen up. All right, now this fella right here, he's a grown man. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> he is six foot two, all right? I'm looking at him. All right, so you all need to treat him with some respect and not the ignorant fool y'all are making him out to be. I was like, hold on. <laughs> I was like, can you not call me an ignorant fool in front of the class, man? She turned around, she said, Drake Braham, was I talking to you? <laughs> I said, no ma'am. I turned around, I put my head back on the desk with the kids. I'm like, we're like, we gonna play some heads up seven up. I'm still in control. Messed up my whole class. And like if you think about it, like seven is just a bad idea. You know, that's like one of the worst ideas we come up with, with as a society, you know. Because if y'all think about it, no other profession allows this, you know? Yeah. Like, no other profession allows a substitute to come in, you know? Like, none of you have gone to the hospital and end up seeing a substitute nurse. <laughs> or, yeah, get your, get, get, your, get your TV repaired by the substitute cable man. It doesn't happen. Because they know you got to be trained to do this type of work, you know? And I was like, like, I, like I know you wouldn't, like, you, you wouldn't allow it. You know, I wouldn't allow it, you know? I got bad luck, you know? Like, you, you, you don't wanna do that, you know? Like, I, I guarantee everybody in here would be really upset if somebody, you were going to court getting ready for your trial and somebody stopped you at the front steps and they were like, hey, excuse me, is your name Todd Smith? <laughs> okay, cool, man, my name is Sherman Johnson. I'm gonna be your substitute lawyer for today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you, man. Uh, I've been looking at your file and uh, I think I'm gonna try to plead you down to life. <laughs> You'd be like, life, I got traffic tickets. Hold on. <laughs> You'd be like, what about real life? Yeah, so you wouldn't allow it, you know? Like I said, like, I got bad luck. I would mess around and get the lazy substitute lawyer. I get the lawyer who doesn't take the job serious. Walks in, up into the courtroom after hanging out late last night. Comes in, extra late, out of breath. Runs into the courtroom. <sighs> hey, everybody. Hey, man, I really apologize for being late. But uh, since I've been here, I've been looking around and uh, apparently my lawyer forgot to leave me his lawyer plans for today. <laughs> yeah, man, so uh, I don't know, man. If it pleases the court, I would like to show a movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. I bought uh, Fast and the Furious. <laughs> you said it was speed, right? It was speed? Okay, yeah, I bought Fast and the Furious. <laughs> You'd be like, no, you'd be like, get me my public defender so I can lose the regular way that I'm supposed to. <laughs> yeah, I want a substitute. Don't want the substitute. <laughs> Bad idea. And I'll tell y'all the worst thing about school, man. I'll tell you the worst thing, about I hate it. I hated taking school pictures. Because my pictures would always come out messed up. Any of you guys ever taken a bad license photo? Bad portrait? Yeah, we've all done it, you know? We thought, we're human, you know? The thing, and the thing about it was, one day I watched the kids take their pictures and I realized why the pictures came out so messed up. I realized that any time you've ever taken a bad picture, it's always the photographer's fault. You know? <laughs> it is, you know? Because we know how to take pictures, right? We get ready to take our picture, we know exactly what to do. We come in, we got our pose together, we're ready. <laughs> yeah. 
And you hear, you're like, this is gonna look good in your book. <laughs> and then, out of nowhere, the photographer starts telling you what to do in your picture. <laughs> you're sitting there ready, you're like. Then all of a sudden, he's like, okay, sir, we're gonna need you to sit back. Uh, oh, 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 okay, all right. All right, now stick your chest out. <laughs> All right, now tilt your head to the right. <laughs> and why don't you put your chin down? <laughs> and why don't you put your hands on your chest? <laughs> and by the time I miss that dimension, you look like you're in a straight jacket. You're like, okay, sir, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> like, you're very good at what you do. Let me get that package, Jeff. Let me get that. Yeah, see, some of y'all laughing. Some of y'all got that package F before, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's like the last package on the list. It's like a 13 by 2. You can't even frame it. <laughs> Best you can do is tell them to email it to you, you know. Hope you got a nice ruler you can put it on the back of. Yeah. Like, it's me in the third grade, 13 by 2. <laughs> put that on the refrigerator. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's up all my pictures, man. It's cool, man. Glad to be here, man. I'm telling y'all something. Man. I love doing this, man. I always love, man, being able to travel and tell jokes, man. You get to go to, you know, exciting places. You get to meet really cool people. Um, you know, because, like, when you call in trying to book shows, you'll talk to some interesting people, you know. Like, I know, like, I was, one time I was trying to book this show, and every time I would call this guy's house, his wife would pick up the phone and throw me off by the way she answered it. Right. Yeah, real religious lady, you know, real church lady, you know, she would, it would just throw me off, you know. Because I would call the house, you know, and a uh, phone would ring, 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 she'd pick up the phone. She'd be like, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, I'd be on the line like, uh, uh, Jesus well. I just hung the phone up, I didn't know what to say. I just, <laughs> I just gave her the quickest Bible verse I knew. I, was, I, was, I guess I gotta go to Bible study so I can call this house. <laughs> They do something different, man. You see different people in church, too, man. I mean, one time I went to, uh, see, like, they have one thing that they do now is uh, every church now has a worship leader, all right? And their job is to lead the whole church in whatever song they're singing, all right? So, you know, you know, the whole church will be rocking. You know, they're just like, our God is an awesome God. He reigns. <laughs> and then the worship leader runs up, and he says something I never expected to hear in a church. You know, he runs up there. He's like, all right, everybody, let's lift your voices and let's make the devil real mad with his next verse. <laughs> and I'm like, um, yeah, I'd rather not. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the devil messes up a lot of people's lives. <laughs> I'd rather the devil just continue not knowing who I was. <laughs> Don't want to be on a first name basis with the devil. That's, uh... Life is hard enough as it is without being on the devil's hit list. <laughs> different stuff, man. You see different stuff. <laughs> I tell you, my favorite church people, though, my favorite church people are the gospel gangster rappers. These are my favorite. Anybody ever seen the gospel gangster rappers? These are the people that just accepted the Lord but can't quite let the streets go. <laughs> Still, maybe participating in little criminal activity on the weekends, you know. <laughs> but I get it. I understand. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight, you know. I'll tell y'all the true story. I was down in uh, Atlanta. We're filming for this uh, comedy show, and once we got done filming, the producer comes up to me and the rest of the comedians and says, "Hey, if y'all want to stick around, we're filming. Uh, we're filming a, a TV show um, uh, in the same studio. So if y'all want to stick around, you all can be in the studio audience." So they're like, "Oh, you know, we're like, yeah, it's so cool. We'll do that." And so uh, the, the show we were doing, it was, a, it was like a gospel version of American Idol, all right? So they would let everybody come through and, and, and parade through, and they would send you whoever to Hollywood if you were good enough, you know? And so, um, <laughs> so we got ready, you know? So they were there, like, we, you know, we're sitting in the audience, and they're like, hey, okay, let's send the first contestant in. First contestant walks in. And they're like, hey, how are you? What are you going to do for us today? In walks the gospel gangster rapper, all right? He walks in. He's like, hey, don't worry about what I'm going to do. All right. <laughs> Don't worry about what I'm going to do, okay? I'm about to bust this freestyle for the Lord, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, everybody, put your L's up. Put your L's up, okay? 
Check it, check it, check it. Yo, yo, yo. The Holy Spirit never could control me, only squeeze me and hold me. That's what Jesus came and told me. Now, ain't that bold, G? Now, the church is where my goals be, because I be praying like a foes to be, loving everybody who comes close to me. <laughs> good he's going to the next round but the judges did not think the same thing the judges took one look at him they were like that was good but we don't think you're quite right for this competition <laughs> why did they tell him that <laughs> he flipped the script on them y'all he was like what you disagree with me don't get it switched fool i still cock the hammer back on the pistol g because i got to see these seven day minutes ain't as hard as me fool what christ side amen And the, the judges, they were like, hey, man, security? Um, <laughs> scared us, y'all. Scared me. I couldn't even go to church next Sunday. Yeah, I couldn't go. I had to stay home and watch church TV. Yeah. I like church TV. Church TV is cool, you know. Church TV, you get to pick your own pastor. You know, I like that. You, know, you get freedom of religion in your own home. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, anytime I end up watching church TV, I always end up watching the same person. Y'all might have seen him. His name is Joe Olstein. Y'all yeah. ever seen Joe Olstein? Yeah. Let me tell you, hey, Joe Olstein is like the happiest man on the planet. <laughs> you see him, he comes out there Sunday morning, he's like, do you receive it to die? <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> hey, hey, don't let the devil steal your joy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sitting there like, oh, I feel better already, Joe. This is great. <laughs> And the thing about Joel is Joel has a story for every sermon that he gives. Does not matter what he's preaching about, he's gonna break out into a story. You know, he'll be in the pulpit. He'll be like, you know, the other day, Victoria and I, we went to a village in the Philippines. And when we got there, we saw this little boy who only had one leg, just one. So I preached life into that little boy. And guess what? That other leg, it just popped right on now, y'all. Amen. Amen. I'm like, what? I'm like, that is a Christmas miracle, Joe. Hey, guys, that's my time, y'all. My name is Bernard Hurst. You guys are wonderful.